This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right. Now, in exams, it has to be slightly artificial, the way they test it. But the way they'll test it... Can you look at example one, please? Example one on page 101. As always, we'll do it in full <coughs> in the exam because it's ticking boxes. <coughs> I'll tell you what they'll do after. On 31st of December, the balance on the cash account was 11,820 debit. Ooh, the balance on cash account, 11,820 debit. Does that mean I think I've got cash or I think I've overdrawn? Got. Say again? You got. Yeah. Got. yeah, if it's a debit in the cash account... A debit balance and asset, I think I've got cash of 11,820. I look at my bank statement and it shows 15,000 credit. Again, does the bank think I've got money or does the bank think I'm overdrawn? We've got, yeah, the bank. A credit balance of the bank means we've got money. However, the two are different. We have a problem. We need to find out why. And listed below are reasons for the difference. Okay? Well, if it turns out there's a mistake in the cash account, we'd better put it right. If it turns out the bank's made an error, we'll tell the bank and put their balance right. If it's timing differences, nobody's made an error, but we should be able to explain the difference. All right? What we're going to do, if I can find my pen. Oh, thank you. Who put it there? Now, what we're going to do... If we find any errors in the cash account, we're going to put it right. So let's open up a cash account. At the moment, our balance, right or wrong, is a debit balance of 11,820. Well, if we find any mistakes, we're going to debit or credit to get the right balance. Okay? Well, let's do that first. Let's run through, let's check, are there any errors in the cash account? If there are, we'll put them right. Anything else for the moment, we'll ignore. The reasons for the difference are as follows. Bank charge is 20. If that's a reason for us being different, what must it mean? What must it mean here? There have been bank charges... And that's a reason we've got a different balance. What must have happened? Perhaps it's not a fair question. Surely it means the bank has charged us money, clearly. They've taken it out of the bank balance. It must mean that we haven't yet entered it. Do you understand me? If we had entered it, there wouldn't be a difference. But it must mean that we've not entered that payment because we didn't know. Well, we need to enter it. What entry in the cash account, please, if there have been bank charges of 20? Right. Your credit cash. And again, although I think it's fairly obvious where the debit would be, in these questions it's irrelevant. I don't care where the debit would be. All I'm trying to do is get the right cash balance. All right? <clears throat> Next one. A payment of 1200 has been entered in the cash account as 2100 Well, I don't need to ask, surely. Surely this is a mistake in our cash account. You agree? And so we need to put it right. You can't go back and change figures. How will I put it right, though? 
we've entered 2,100, we should have only entered 1,200. What entry do I need to put this right? Say again? Debit night share. Surely when we made the payment, it was a payment, we credited with 2-1. We should have only credited with 1,200. Surely to put it right, we'll debit with 900. Everybody? To correct the error. In the exam you don't need the wording, obviously. This is workings. But are we all, Irina? No problem? But we can do that by two entries, can we? Oh, you could, but <clears throat> I think it's... Provided they're the right two entries. I think what Irina's suggesting, you'd entered 2-1. You could say, well, if that shouldn't be there, let's debit to remove it, and then let's put in the right one. No problem. I just think it's obviously a tiny bit quicker to just put in the difference. But either way around, you're happy. Everybody? Next one. Ooh. So you can remember what I said a bit ago. A cheque for 200 has been dishonoured. Remember, I did say, dishonoured cheques, it's always cheques we've received... We thought we'd have the money. We now find out, in fact, we haven't had the money. What entry is needed when we find out we haven't had the money? You must credit cash. You must credit cash, yeah. Uh, learn this one. <clears throat> it's always the same. But you see, when we received it, we thought we'd have the money. We debited cash. When you find out you haven't had the cash... Credit to cancel it. Dishonoured check. All right. What about number four? Number four, there were unpresented checks told in 6.5. Well, I did write down earlier, but be careful here. Unpresented checks... Always. They're cheques we've written. They have been entered in the cash account. They simply haven't yet appeared on the bank statement. But the cash account is right. They've been entered. It was correct to enter them. The cash balance is right. Agreed? The lodgement's not yet appeared. Again, look back to what I wrote. We've entered in the cash account, and that is correct. They have been entered. It's simply that the amount's not yet on the bank statement. So the cash account's right. And so what is the correct balance? The correct balance... I think, is 12,500. Am I right? However, of course, there is still a problem in that although my cash balance is now right, it still doesn't agree with the bank statement. Sorry, you're still copying me, but... Sorry, the correct balance is 12,500. It still doesn't agree with the bank statement. The bank statement says 15. Well, of course, the difference should be these checks in the post. All right? Nobody's made an error, but the, there will be this difference due to checks in the post. However, we'd better make sure that the checks in the post do explain the difference. If I can explain the difference, we're now happy. If I can't, there's still a problem. Well, to make sure we can explain the difference, we have a bank reconciliation statement. Now, 
And as I said a moment ago, we're not correcting anybody's error. There's no mistake here. We're just making sure we can explain the difference. <clears throat> you always start with the balance on the bank statement. How much is it? 15,000. It's a credit balance. Now, I do warn you, it may sound silly, but wait till you try a few. You would agree the bank balance could be a credit, we've got money, or it could be a debit, which would mean you were overdrawn. You agree? Mm -hmm. You will see when you try a few that especially if it's a debit balance that you're overdrawn, it's very easy to make silly mistakes. This may sound silly, but I do suggest you get in the habit, I'll put plus 15,000. Had it been a debit balance, I would put minus 15, all right? Somebody's stapling, I think. All right, well, I want to make sure we can explain the difference. The difference should be checks in the post. Let's have a look. Note 4 tells us there are unpresented cheques of 6,500. These are payments we've made which haven't yet appeared on the bank statement. What will happen to the bank balance when these do appear? <clears throat> cheques we've written, remember but they've not yet appeared on the bank statement. The 6,500, what will happen to the bank balance? Well, you may be right, but will it go up, will it go down? down. Yes, surely. When those checks go through, the balance here will go down. I'm not going to add up yet, but although it may take several weeks, ultimately the bank balance will fall by six and a half. True? At the same time, though, you've got these lodgements. We've paid money into the bank. It hasn't yet appeared. How much is it? 4,000? Well, again, I hope it's very obvious, but even so. Whether it's next week or next month, when they do appear... Will the bank balance be higher or lower? Higher. Higher. And so, what would happen to the bank balance when they all went through? Twelve and a half thousand? And I hope, obviously, that should be the balance in the cash book. And of course here it is. Here it is, and so we're happy. But can I stress two big things, please, please. One from a purely <coughs> practical point of view, what happens in real life, you do this first, and if it agrees, wonderful, everything's perfect. However, if you do this and find the cash book balance is different, then of course you know there must be some mistakes. You would agree with me? Hello? And in real life, you then have to go through checking everything to find the mistakes. It's a real pain, checking every entry, you know. In exams, they can't make you do that, obviously. They tell you what the errors are, no problem. Secondly, although I think I've said it twice, I must stress. The bank isn't wrong 
You know, nobody's made a mistake here. All this statement is doing is just checking we can explain the difference. That's all. Okay? In fact, the bank balance will never end up at 12 and a half. <laughs> it won't. Because the trouble is, by the time these checks have appeared, you'll have been writing new checks and receiving more. You know? I'm not really worried there. But this is simply a statement making sure we can explain the difference. If we can, we're happy. If we can't, there must be mistakes. We've got to find them. Okay? So, sorry I took, it took a while, but I hope that makes sense. In principle, it is actually quite straightforward, but I appreciate because here you're not terribly familiar with checks, it is that much easier to sort of get lost in it. But if we are happy there, then it is just uh, obviously practice. Okay? Alright, to show you how they ask it, can you... They're, they're actually... Well, actually, forget that. I'll tell you the test in a minute. Uh, in the exam, they can't ask you to produce these. There are several questions. One type of question they ask. They give you this bank reconciliation statement... But they tell you it's been prepared by an inexperienced accountant. And the minute you see inexperienced accountant, you know they've made mistakes. And so they might give you that statement. And they might, oh, they might have added the unpresented checks and subtracted the lodgements. Yep. And of course, got a different balance. Yep. And they'd say, what is the correct balance on the cash account after correcting the errors? Which I think in principle is very easy. But it means, a bit like before, go, we're going down and checking each one. Were they right to add it? Were they right to subtract it? Clear? Uh, well, I'll do one in a minute. Another thing they do, and be very careful here, in this one, I gave you the balance on the cash account. I gave you the balance on bank statement. And of course, we ended up with everything working. What's quite popular is just to give you one of the two. For instance... They might just tell you the balance on cash, okay? They give you a list. <clears throat> they don't tell you the balance on the bank statement. They just tell you cash. They give you a list of reasons why they're different. And they want you to put the cash balance right. And so they're just checking that you realise... That items one to four, uh, one to three, were mistakes in the cash account. You deal with them. Four and five weren't mistakes in cash account. Well, put those three through. What's the correct balance? There it is. Am I making sense? Or finally, the other way I could have done it. I could have given you the same question. And told you the balance on the bank statement. Not, I, I don't tell you the balance on cash account. All I tell you is the balance on the bank statement is 15,000. Alright? I say, oh, the cash balance is different. Here are the reasons. And I want to know the correct cash balance. Well, if I've given you the 15... We deal with the unpresented checks and lodgements. The correct cash balance was 12,500. Again, it was just checking you knew which of those reasons affected this statement. Or previously, which of the reasons affected the cash account. Alright? <coughs>